I'm just about to do some refactoring of my Rest Mud Adventure game, so join me as I'm going to explain some of the refactoring that I've already done. I'm going to do some more refactoring live. Okay, so Rest Mud is a game that has evolved over time. I didn't necessarily write it all with TDD, it does have a lot of integration tests. So I have a load of tests that I can run every time I make a change, which is great because these tests rarely have to change. They're requirements tests, they check whether a game's working, they put games into specific states before they run, they hardly ever have to change because they're testing external behaviour. Which means I've got a pretty good safety net when I come to refactor code, because refactoring code, and you read all about it online or in uh, books. Refactoring code is about changing the structure of code, but not necessarily changing what the code does. And if you're not changing the external interface, most of your tests are going to work. Your lower level unit tests might fail because you're changing the interface that they use, but I don't have any of that. <laughs> so uh, paradoxically, I'm in a good position to do refactoring. I'm just going to explain what we've done. Rest Mud has a, a main class called Mud Game. And this class is still massive, right, but has been a lot bigger. And the reason it's been a lot bigger is I have things like locations. And this was previously in here just as a map, like the location objects in here. Locations was previously just a map, which meant that I would have functions like this. Let's see what we've got for a location object, find usage. So in mud game, you can see that there's a whole bunch of methods in here which currently do things for that location objects collection. And there's certain guards and conditions in place which add a little bit more on top of the collection. If that location objects was a, an object in itself, then I wouldn't need to have all these methods in the mud game and I'd be starting to um, refactor it and chunk it down and make it a little bit slower. I'd also be increasing the uh, semantic structure of the application, making it a lot easier to understand because then we've got objects that manage uh, the, the concepts. So location objects as a class or location things would be the class that manages the collection or maintenance or update, up upkeeping of all the objects that are in locations in the adventure game. So like clocks or signs on walls, they're all location objects. They belong in a particular location. You can't take them, they're fixed in those locations. That's a special type of object in an adventure game. But at the moment it's wrapped in a map. So I really want to change that. So I'm gonna show you what the locations looks like. So in locations, this was a hash map in the rest mud game itself and all these methods were on the rest mud game now they're not now it's a little bit easier it's a lot easier to see what's going on in these it's a lot easier to see which ones have guards and which ones don't it's a lot easier to see whether it's making a copy of the the map this one doesn't some of my um, collection classes make copy of the contents which makes it very um, thread safe and, and uh, more functional. Some of them don't, so there's potential risk in a multi-user game of getting um, clashes. But I figure that the more that I simplify the code, the easier it will be to identify synchronization points, easier it will be to understand the code, and the code will get smaller and everything will just be much, much better. So what I'm going to do now that we're here is you can see here that I made a decision when I was refactoring the collectibles object that instead of having a get game collectibles method, I put it on a public field. I'm now changing my mind about that. What I want is a, an accessor method. Now in IntelliJ and in most IDEs, we have built in refactoring. So I don't have to worry too much in advance whether I get the code right, because the IDE will help me later on. And the benefit is if I've got a lot of tests, I can use this refactoring and be fairly certain that my code hasn't been unduly affected. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to in, use the encapsulate fields refactoring. And that dialog is going to come up. And it's going to say, so this is the um, field game collectibles. I want to have a getter for it. I'm going to ignore the set access. I'm going to use accessors even when field is accessible. We're going to keep the encapsulated field private. The accessor is public. Refactor. 
So that's changed 46 things in my code. And you can see here that this is now private. Let's find usages. Yes, there we go. I can see that we, in the mud game itself, it's using the get game collectible. In other parts of the game, use the get game collectibles. So I've now got a wrapper around it. That's quite good if I ever want to do lazy instantiation of the game collectibles rather than set it up in here. Because this isn't necessarily a great way of testing the mud game because I can't um, inject these dependencies. I don't have a lot of options. They're created there. But now that I'm wrapping this in a method, I have more options about how this can be set up. I could do lazy instantiation if it's not set up. I could set it up by passing in uh, dependencies in the constructor when I construct the mud game if I want to I have more options so let me now do the same for this in fact what we should do first is run all the tests I've done refactoring what I need to do is run all the tests and make sure that that hasn't failed now I have a lot of tests here but they only take what, eight seconds to run so I can run these pretty much all the time whenever I want and these check um, <laughs> pretty much every class in passing. Some of them are direct unit tests. There's four games in here and this checks that all the games can work which as a side effect checks all the rules and conditions in the game engine. By pulling them out into separate classes I have the ability then to go in and do more specific unit testing. The act of refactoring also highlights little bugs and over time this will gradually make um, RESTmud a better coded application. So I'm going to do the same thing here. Refactor, encapsulate fields. I just want the getter on there. Private, public, that'll do. Refactor. And again, if I'm not happy with anything here, I can change it later on because it's just refactoring. And I've got a test failure. Why was that? So I have some intermittency in my unit tests, which I do need to fix. I fixed one intermittency uh, error yesterday. I'm going to ignore that one for this point, for this moment, simply because I'm focused on this, but I know that's a problem. I right, am going to fix it, and I am going to fix it today. But let's focus in on the refactoring. That's one of the issues with one of these tests. I know exactly, but I need to fix it. It's because I'm pretty sure the reason that's happening is I randomly generate things. Um, I randomly generate keys. The keys are readable. Sometimes the keys are duplicate, so when I put them in a hash, I'm overriding an object that's there, and I don't get the um, information I'm expecting. But I'm going to investigate that in more detail later on. So let's refactor. Where are we? Excellent. So I've done all these as private fields. I'm just going to check this in. Okay, now we're ready to start. So what I'm going to do is let's carry on the same type of refactoring. Anything that's currently just a collection, if it's got a lot of methods, I'm going to turn that into an object on its own right. And this location objects looks like a good candidate. So let me find the usages first, see where that's used. So I'm adding in locations, objects. You can see what I've done before we start is I have organized all those methods together because I've been getting ready for this. Uh, that makes it easier. So what I would normally do is I'd find usages, find all the methods that use that in here, we paste them up into the same area so that I've got it uh, semantically in front of me. Then what I'm going to do is let's create this. So instead of that, I'm going to have a private final. I'll just do this for the moment because I can add accessors, whatever else later on. Private final. I'm going to call it location objects. I'm not going to call it location object manager. Or anything. I'm just going to call it location objects. The location objects at the moment, new location objects. And that will help me create the class. So I'll enter create class. Just putting that in the main game at the moment. Again, as long as it's in roughly the right place, I don't mind because I can refactor that later on. Let me just get rid of everything else that we're not using here.
So what we've got is we've got a global set of location objects which help me make sure that they all exist, then references to them in the locations themselves. This is a valid thing to have at the game level because it's working on two different objects. This is saying for this game, make this correct. So all I'm really going to do here is delegate off the management of the location objects into that location object. It seems very small, right? It seems like a very small thing. All I'm going to do is add things into a collection, get them back. But it's a specific collection of location objects. So in theory, the game locations objects I should probably be using this. So what we're seeing now is as I refactor it into a particular object, I already have a class that represents this. I don't even need to do this refactor. What I should be doing is refactoring to this. And this should probably um, have a change name because there's no way this is inventory of location objects. Right, so what I'm going to do change tag. This is important, right? What we've done is as we start to refactor, we found duplicate code. So I am going to unwind this a little bit. I'm just going to delete this. This is probably not what you're supposed to do. This location objects is going to be inventory location objects. Let's do this from scratch. The code will be broken here. That's fine. So get location object. Get location objects dot add item. Right, so this add item presumably puts in the object ID and the object. So that's even simpler than what we had which is good. Now this one isn't even used, but I'm not taking it out yet because I have plans for that. Uh, but really this shouldn't exist yet. So this exists at the game level. This exists at the game level. This is delegating out to something that already exists. So I don't really need this. Where is this used? Let me just check whether my tests run. Okay, let's find out where this is used. So that is used in there, in game dot get location object. What I need to do, we've got this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create an accessor for it. We didn't do that. So let's refactor, encapsulate fields, create the accessor. That should now be used in here. Here we go, get location objects. Now what I can do is anywhere that we're using this, I can just use the get location objects directly. So I'm just going to inline this. That means it's going to get rid of this method and use the game dot get location objects directly. Refactor. There we go. So that's not the refactoring I thought I was going to have. But what's great is I have this. I'm going to mark this as a to do. So I'm just marking that as a to do. I'm going to investigate that later on. In the mud game itself, because this is managing the kind of dictionary of location objects and where it is in the locations itself, I'm leaving that in here. So I've now got two methods here instead of uh, the three that we had. It doesn't seem a big change, but what's important is that this is no longer a hash map in here. It is now an object and it's an object that already existed. So I already had most of the code that I needed. 
I'm going to have to do some investigation. If this gives me too much power in certain places, what I will do is I'll um, create an interface which limits the um, scope that's available and code to the interface in here. I can restrict things that way. That's nice and simple. But that is an example of refactoring sort of the code. And it's a very small example because I'm trying to do this in small chunks, even though that was mildly uh, confusing halfway through for me. Hopefully there was some useful information in there for you. Thank you very much. <laughs>